In this quick tip tutorial for Railclone 2, we're going to look at how you can apply generators or styles to different sections of the same baseline according to their material ID. We'll create a pavement style that adds a drop curb to any spline segment with a material value equal to 2. In creating these styles, we'll also be covering the combined sequence and reverse nodes. The scene already has some splines and a road from the library in place. There are also five small slices of pavement used to create the new style. This example demonstrates the creation of a curb and pavement in one, though of course the same principles could be used to create them separately for a more flexible approach and easier reuse. The scene and any required assets to complete this tutorial can be downloaded from i2soft's website. To get started, it's helpful to think of the two parts of the pavement, the full height and the drop curb, separately, even though we're creating them as part of the same style. There's an existing rail clone object in the scene we can use to get going. This style requires only two segments, a start and a middle section. Using these we can create a curb edge and govern the length of each stone. So select the rail clone object and open the style editor. Create a new linear array and add a segment object and a spline object. Connect the spline object to the spline input of the generator and connect the segment for now to the default. Nothing will appear because we need to select both the segments and the splines from the scene. So let's do the spline first. Come back over to the modify panel, come down to the base objects rollout and pick the spline from the scene called line 1. In this particular case we'll turn off full length because we really only want to work on a section for simplicity. So we'll change the length to about 8 meters say. That means that this style will only extend 8 meters down the full length of this spline. Now let's pick a segment. So come back to the style editor, click the segment node and pick this curb segment here from the scene. Now you can see that's working but it clearly needs to be rotated. So select the node, come to transform and go to the Z rotation value and change it to 90 degrees. So it's rotated but uh, it's not aligning to the edge of the spline the way we'd like. So to fix that, come to General, under Alignment Y, change it to Bottom to push it back. And finally, there is a material already on this rail clone object, but each different piece of this geometry is having it applied independently. And what we would like to happen is for the material to span several adjacent segments. To do that, simply come to Deform and turn on Apply Box Mapping and Real World Map Size. So that's the full height curve mainly done. There are two things we'd like to add. End caps so that we don't see inside the mesh and I'd like to add some joints to separate this into different stones. We can do all of this using this simple section here which is called curb start. So in order to avoid having to set up the mapping and the transform and the Y alignment every single time I add a new segment, I'm simply going to copy this one and paste it so that it retains those parameters. Now, with this selected, simply change the geometry by going up to Properties, clicking on the Object Picker, and picking Curb Start from the scene. Connect this to the Start input of the generator, and we should create a cap on the end. There we go. Now we want on, on the other end too, but we don't necessarily want to have to create an extra piece of geometry for that, since it's just a mirror, we can do it directly in the style editor using a mirror operator node. So drag that into the construction view, drag the curb start into the input, make sure this is set to X, and then drag the output of the mirror node into the end input of the linear array. And you'll see it caps that end. Now we can use both this mirror node and the curb start segment to create joints. To do that, we'll replace the curb that's in the default with a sequence. So drag a sequence node into the construction view. We want to start with a straightforward piece of curb after the start cap. We want the next thing to be a curb. So drag that into the first sequence slot. Then we want to close that on the right hand side of that curb. Stone, we want to close it off. So we want the mirror, the same as on this end. Drag that into there. Let's connect this up so we can see what's going on. And then to start a new stone, we want curb start again. So we'll drag that to the third slot there. 
So what you have now is a repeating section, which is a curb start, a standard middle section, and then a curb start, which has been mirrored. To change the width of the stones, it's a simple case of clicking on the sequence node, going to curb, and choosing the amount of times you wish it to repeat. Let's say 7 or 8 for now. So that really completes the full height curb. Now we'll make the drop curb using very much the same principles. So a new linear array. We'll use the same spline, in fact we'll disconnect it from this one for now and reconnect it to the drop curb, just temporarily. And then we want to retain the same information in these segment nodes, so we'll just paste a new version of this in and then pick the drop curb start, drop curb ramp I think I've called it, from the scene and connect this to the start node so we can see it. There it is in the scene. So we want to use the same principle. We've got a drop curb at either end, then we've got the much shorter curb start and then a repeating section and then a mirrored version to close it off. In order to ensure that the ends will be capped no matter how long I make the drop curb section, it makes sense to attach the start and the end caps to the start and the end points of the linear array. So let's paste another one of these in pick the drop curb start geometry from the scene and this time we're going to combine these two together the drop curb ramp and the start using a compose node you can drag the drop curb ramp into the first empty slot and then drop curb start into the second and connect that whole thing to the start so now you see we have a cap there on the end and we want the same thing at the end, but reversed, of course. So the beauty of using a Compose node is that we have this reverse operator that works with it. If I drag that into there, connect the Compose node to its input, and connect the output of the reverse to the end, you can see what's starting to happen. Now, it's reversed the order, so that instead of having the ramp and then the end cap, we have the end cap and then the ramp. That's correct, but it hasn't mirrored it. Luckily, if I click on the reverse node, there is an option to mirror the segments on the x-axis. So just turn that on and you get what we're looking for. So now that we've done that, we just need to add the section in the middle. And we do this in exactly the same way as the sequence node up here. So let's add a new sequence node and let's connect that to the default input. We haven't yet brought in the standard uh, lower the drop curb section so paste in a new segment node for that and pick it from the scene and that's the first thing we want to repeat after we've already got the end cap on the start so let's plug that straight into the sequence node and you'll get it spanning across there and then we want the reversed version to close the stone off at the other end now we don't have a mirrored version of this drop curb start geometry yet so add a mirror node connect the drop curb start to that and then connect the mirror to the next input of the sequence see that's working and then you just want to drop, drop the standard drop curb start into the fine third and final sequence input and there we go we've got exactly the same setup as we used for the standard height curb now all we need to do to change the width of these sections is just turn up the drop curb counters to say 7 or 8 depending on what I put in the last. Finally we want to plug the spline back into the full height curve as well so it's using the spline for both of them. So what's happening now is that the, the uh, both these generators <coughs> are producing geometry on top of one another which you can see if you look at it in wireframe. What we need to do now is control it so that the drop curb only appears for the segments of the base spline that have a material ID of 2 and for the standard one to appear everywhere where their material ID is 1. So that's easily done. You click on the generator, go to properties, limits and then turn on material ID and you can see by default it's equally limiting it to 1. 
If I do the same for the drop curve, just click on that, go to limits, turn on material ID, but this time set it to two. And that's all you need to do there. That's set up and ready to go now. So the rest of it's done by just manipulating the spline. So let's just pick the spline from the scene, go to segment mode. There's a segment here. Actually, before I go any further, let's just turn back on full length here. There we go. So let's just pick that segment and you can see actually it's already set to a material ID of two. So as I move this around, you can see the drop curve working. Anywhere I want a drop curve, I just change the material ID of the segment to two. So maybe I want one on this corner. Just come down to the bottom of the spline where it says surface properties. Go to material set ID and change it to two. See that works. If you have two adjacent ones that are the material ID that are the same, it will continue until it reaches the end. So you can see the drop curves start at each end. It ignores the vertex in the middle. And then one final tip. Um, this is a rather tall curve at the moment. So let's say we want to bring it down, make it a little bit shorter, and maybe make that adjustable. We can open up the style and add a parameter to it, which is controllable from this parameter's rollout here. So I can control the height of the curve from this parameter's rollout without having to go in and tinker with the style directly. And so I'll just do that. So um, the way to do that is to add a numeric parameter, which if I drag that in, you should see it pop up down here, and to wire that to some of the parameters of these generators. So let's give this a name. So we call it uh, curb height. And then click on each one of these segments. And if you right click, you can export certain parameters that can be wired together. So in this case, I want to export Z offset for both of these generators. And then wire this curb height into both of those. I'll just change the type to float so I've got more control. And now if you come to the parameters, if I make this a negative value, it will pull that curb down below the spline height. And you can create a curb that's got perhaps a more realistic height to it. In this short tutorial, we've learned how to use material IDs on splines to target specific generators in a single style. We've also looked at various nodes, including the sequence, mirror, compose, and reverse nodes. And we've looked at how you can control parameters directly from within the modifier using the numeric parameters item and by right clicking on a generator and exposing its value. For more training on Rail Clone 2 and more detailed information, please check out the reference and the tutorials section on the i2Soft website.